the no zone this is the place where we have a lot of fun we laugh and we learn my name is wanja i'm charlie and i'm marara Ra. Uh, charlie mm -hmm. i loved last week's show oh yes so did i we learned a lot about road safety and we also had a lot of fun with our studio guests that's right we're going to have a lot of fun today in cool words out there and number run why don't we go into the chill out zone and meet today's studio guests they're waiting to meet you follow me Hello, everyone. Are you happy to be here? Yes! Let's all say a big hello to all the people who are watching us at home. Hello! We are really glad to have you helping us with today's show. We are going to have a lot of fun, aren't we, Mar... Where's Marana? I don't know. Let's do this. Let's call him out on a count of three. One, two, three. Marana! Well, hello, everyone. I'm sorry I'm late. I had to go and find pencil and paper to write down this week's Nozone buzzwords. Okay then. And I hope you also have a pen and a paper so you can write down these buzzwords. But first, who can tell me what they are teaching us about? Yes, John. Communication. Now, what are the buzzwords? Dial. Send. Receive. Address. Message. Now, I hope you'll also listen out for these buzzwords and see how many of them you can spot in the next program. Because it's time for us to go and find out what our friends at Makutano Junction are up to. It's time for... Junction Juniors! Now, all the notes you have should help you write a good letter. This letter should be addressed to a person in your favorite country. Yes, James. Should it be someone you know or a country you know about? No, it can be a stranger, so long as you're the same age. Now, you should use this message to learn something new about the country. Yes, Leleti. Will we need to buy stamps for our letters? Now, to send a letter by post, you do need a stamp. Now, the cost of postage depends on the size of the letter and the place you are sending the letter to. Teacher? Yes, Ashni? So a parcel will be more expensive than a letter? You are very correct. But for our purposes, we are just writing the letters as exercise. So keep practicing and you don't need to buy stamps. What's the point of writing letters that we are not going to send? It's just good practice, just like when you learn your maths times tables. It helps you in your everyday life. For example, if I wanted to send five letters at a cost of 25 shillings each, how much would I need to have? Yes, Babu. Five times 25. Well, five times 20 is 100, and five times five is 25. So we add 125 to get 125. So, 5 times 25 is 125, Bob. Correct. Now, you have used the partition method to multiply a two-digit number by a single-digit number. And you have seen how important it is to know your maths times table. Well, remember that whoever writes the best letter will get to join the Penfold community and you will write real letters to Penfolds all over the world. So write your letters very carefully. You're all excused. Ashley, where is Omishi? Oh, um, she went to India on short notice with her parents. Um, do you need any help? Mm. That assignment that Chapenda has given us is going to be so much fun. Definitely. I wonder if we get to win, whether we have to send our letters by email or by post. It will probably be by post. For you, maybe, but for me. I'll be going to the Saba Cafe and sending all my messages over the internet. I receive all my messages like that. Letter. Letter. Spell, Spell it. it. 
L E T T E R. Ashmi. Hi. Ashmi is here to help me because I'm sure to go to India. Hope you don't mind. It's okay. Teacher Pendo gave us an assignment to write a letter to any country we wanted. Letters? Yeah, and there's a prize. Whoever writes the best letter gets to join the Pimple community and he receives and sends real letters. That sounds fun. Can I help? No! no. Bakari can help me if he wants. He doesn't have to help you, Brian. I already know who I like to write to. I think I'll write to someone in the capital city of China, near the Great Wall of China, where they make all Great Wall TVs. I wonder what it is like there. The fireworks must be very huge there. You are wrong. I know for a fact that the Great Wall of China is not where they make TVs, and it is nowhere near the capital city of China. How do you know? Have you ever seen it? Ah, Bakari is right. You know, China is not a small country. It will take you many days to send a parcel from one end of China to the other. Ah, fine. It doesn't matter. We're writing letters so that we can learn more things about the country and the people in that country. If I was in your class, I wouldn't know who or where to write to. I don't know which country to write to. Maybe I could write to a better place in China. Why is that? Mm. I'd write to a mission in India. I'm sure India is a very good place to write to. That's not how India is. And besides, my family is Kenyan. My great-grandfather came here to build a railway. The only relative I have is my aunt, <laughs> who lives in Mumbai. Yeah, right. OK, so, Mr. Genius, see, we know it all. Where are you going to write your letter to? Mine is easy. I'll write to London, where my shoes will be going very soon. <laughs> To. So why don't you do some research and find out more? Yeah, Nita is right. I'll go to the post office and find out how much it is for letters and where we want to send them to. And the rest of us can go get an atlas and know where we are going to write to. Yeah, and now we could find somewhere to write to, eh? Come on, come on, guys, come on. Go Junction Juniors! Yay! I want to stay here and try to write my own letter. Hello, Ms. Baraka. We have some work to do. We are finding out all about writing letters for communication. That sounds interesting. But letters are not the only way to communicate. How else can you communicate? Well, we are communicating by talking. You can use the telephone, you can send text messages, and you can use the email. Wow, Ms. Baraka. I didn't think you knew about email. <laughs> <laughs> Even we old men know about email. Now, I'm going to the post office to send eight letters. Each stamp costs 24 shillings. Then I need a stamp for each letter. How much will my grandpa need for his eight letters? Um, that should be eight times 24. Eight times four is 32. So the two goes into the units column and we carry the three. 8 times 20 is 160. So we bring down the 2, then we add 3 to 6 to get 9, and we bring down the 1. The total cost will be 
192 shillings. That is very good. Now, I wish you children all the best of luck. And make sure you tell them all about Makutani and ask questions about their countries. All right? Yeah. Bye, kid. Bye. All atlases are there. Now, they will help you get all the facts you need about the countries you want to write about. But do we have to write a letter? Can we just write an email instead? It's faster. But it's important to know how to write a good old-fashioned letter. Besides, what if you needed to write to a country where they can't get email? But teacher, are there countries like that? Oh yes, all over the world. Just check in the atlas and you'll see. Now, a real letter can go everywhere where there's a postal address or a post office, as long as you write the correct address. When you finish, lock up and bring me the keys. Okay. okay. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. This is just what you need. writing our letters. And the post office was so helpful. And also explained how my letter could get to Buckingham Palace. Um, guys, I'm gonna read my letter and get good. Dear Mishi, how my letter finds you well. Ashin, your cousin told us that you had to go to India urgently because one of your relatives is not feeling well. I wish her quick recovery. I also hope you are enjoying your stay in India. I hear there are so many cars and motorbikes on the roads in Mumbai and New Delhi that you can't even see the road from above. Anyway, I hope to hear from you soon. Have a good stay. Sincerely, James. So, how is it? You should read this atlas. It says that India has the second largest population in the world. And look at all these people bathing in the Ganges River. It flows from the Himalayas. It's said to be a holy river. Bakari, did you get to finish your letter? Would you like to hear it? Yes. Yeah. Here it goes. Dear Habiba, how are you doing? I hope that you are fine. The forest is doing much better since we cleaned it up last time, and we are still working really hard to keep it clean. How is Tanzania? I hope you are enjoying living in Arusha. Is it just like Makutano? Have you got any friends now? I hope you have started a new branch of Junction Juniors out there. We really miss you, Habiba. Sincerely, Bakari. You have the best letter, Bakari. Yeah, the best. Hey, guys. Can I be part of the Junction Juniors? Sure thing, Ashley. You can be part of the Junction Junior. Thank you. Junction Juniors forever! Yeah! Junction Juniors! Wow, I really enjoyed that episode on letter writing. Did you? Yes! Good, so what buzzwords did you hear? I heard the buzzword message. Uh-huh, excellent. Anyone else? I heard the word address. Uh-huh. Tell me, what else did you learn? I learned how important it is to address a letter or a parcel correctly. Excellent. Yes, uh -huh. and it's really interesting to find out about other places in the world. Wow, uh -huh. that's amazing. I can see that everyone has learned a lot today. Hey, 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 hey everyone, that's my favorite sound. It's time for... Cool! cool. Hello there, and welcome to Cool Words. Today, we are going to learn about words that are made by joining two or more words. Let's look at this sentence. The milkman who was carrying a teapot stood at the doorstep and put the key into the keyhole. What do you notice about the highlighted words? Oh, oh, oh Chapendo. Yes, Marara? All of them are made up of two words. Mm -hmm, you're right. Now let's look at the words carefully again. 
milkman, teapot, doorstep, key hole. Now, there are many words like this in English. Who can give me some other examples? Yes, Paul? I'm chair. Mm -hmm, very good. Someone else? Yes, Atiena? Bedroom. Aha, uh -huh, bedroom. Someone else? Yes, Akov? Windmill. Mm -hmm, very good. Someone else? Oh, 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 teacher Pendo, teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara? Matchbox. Uh -huh, very good. You're all so clever. Each word you have mentioned is made up of two words. A word made after joining two words is called a compound word. Can we say that together? A compound word. Very good. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions. And for each question I ask, the answer will be a compound word. Word. Are you all ready? Yes! Good. Here's the first one. What is the name of a ball which is kicked with the foot? Yes, Joan? Football. Uh -huh. Very good. How about a bag carried in the hand? Yes, Anne? Handbag. Excellent. The land at the side of the lake is a? Yes, Marara? Lakeside. Mm -hmm, very good. And what about the shelf we put books on? Is called a? Yes, Stephen? Bookshelf. Perfect. Well done, all of you. When we look at each of these words, they have two shorter words which join to make a compound word. It's just a kind of a sum. Foot plus ball equals football. Who would like to try the next one? Handbag. Yes, Mpau? Hand plus bag equals handbag. Very good. What about lakeside? Yes, Marara? Lake plus side is equal to lakeside. Uh -huh, very good. And which two words join to make the compound word bookshelf? Yes, Joan? Book plus shelf equals to bookshelf. Mm -hmm, very good. Well done, all of you. Now, can you give me some other examples of compound words? Yes, a cough? Head scarf. It is a scarf worn on the head. Very good. Head plus scarf equals head scarf. Someone else? Yes, Atiena? Earring. Mm -hmm. It is a ring worn on the ear. Very good. Ear plus ring equals earring. Someone else? Yes, Anne? Handball. A ball game played with the hand. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hand plus ball equals handball. Well done, all of you. Those were great examples of compound words. Remember, compound words are made by joining two shorter words. Shall we play a game? Yes! Good. Don't forget to join in at home. Now, I have some cards here. I'd like you to choose two words to make a compound word. Who would like to go first? Yes, Atiena? Bed plus time, bed time. Mm -hmm, very good. Yeah. Who is next? Yes, Akath? What compound word do you have? Newspaper. News plus paper is newspaper. Uh -huh, very good. So the compound word is newspaper. Who would like to go next? Yes, Joan? Okay, so what do we have? I plus bro, I bro. Mm -hmm, very good. So we have the compound word I bro. Who would like to go next? Yes, Anne? What do we have? Hand plus shake is handshake. Excellent. Someone else? Yes, Steven? So what have you chosen? Thumb plus print is equals to thumb print. Very good. So your compound word is thumb print. Well done, everyone. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Teacher Pendo. That was great fun. Well, that's all we have time for today on Cool Words. But I have a message to deliver. Maspiri is going to take us on a journey in... Out there!
Mombasa is so far from here. What if it gets lost or ends up to the wrong person? I know for sure my friend Hussein will love to read this. <laughs> Come on, people. Let's take the journey over later together. Wow. These are so many people. I wonder if they are here to learn more about letters too. If you are sending a letter, I'm told that you have to buy the stamps for the correct amount depending on the weight of your parcel. Even though some people will prefer communicating via emails, I am told that most people are still sending letters and so the letters to be sent out are so many. So the workers here have to be really fast. First of all, the letters have to be sorted. The workers make sure that the addresses on each letter face the same direction to make it easier for further sorting. Then the letters are dead stamped. My friend tells me that it is important to dead stamp the letters because it is the only way to cancel the stamps so that they cannot be reused and also to tell the origin of the letter. But what happens to the letter if it is wrongly addressed? Or if someone changes their addresses, they mark it with the initials RTS, which means return to sender, and put it here. Then, the big bags are filled with letters and moved to their destinations ready for further sorting. really have to be very keen on the details here. You miss one digit and the letter ends up going to the wrong person. When all is sorted, the letters to be taken to the other regions, for example, Mombasa, Nakuru, Makindu are packed and ready to go. Hey, did you ask for a Nozon comic last week? This might be yours. It's on its way. However, when you are sending an urgent parcel, the process is different here. The weight is checked and within hours, the person on the other side receives it. Hey, hold on. Look, it's here finally. Judith is happy. She has received so many letters. Oh, now that I know the journey of a letter well, I will make sure that I have the right address. I am happy that my friend will hear from me. It's been a long time. Bye. <laughs> the postman empties the boxes several times a day. The journey of my letter has just begun. Wow, that was an interesting trip. Did you enjoy that? Yes! Oh, yes. It was so much fun to see the journey of a letter. It was amazing. Oh, yes, it definitely was. But now it's time for a different kind of journey. It's time for us to get our minds in a mathematical mood, do some numbers, and do some running. Because it's time for... Number Run! Now, this is a game that we invented so that we could help Marara with his maths. Oh, yes, and I need as much help as I can get. Now, the game is very simple. On the blackboard, there are three sums. Now, just like this example sum right here, there's a little something missing. Now, all our number runners have to do is solve the sum and go and look for the solution in the number pit. But we didn't want to make it too easy, so you have to look for the solution among all of these numbers. Now, once you find the solution, like this, you go back to the blackboard. Now, when you get here to the board, you need to make sure that you put your number in the correct position, like that, where the question mark is. Please make sure you don't get your numbers mixed up because the moment this number is here on the board, it's stuck and that means you cannot change it. That's right. Now, once you've solved the sum, it's time for you to run, run, run across to your teammates and tag in the person to do the next sum, just like this. Now, there is a catch. You only have 
45 seconds to solve all these three sums. So, we all need to cheer our number runners with the correct answer. Very good. That's right. Now, with number run, speed is everything. Because if you do manage to solve the three sums within the 45 second time limit, Marara has these wonderful maths books that he will let you take back to your school. Are the rules clear? Yes! Are you ready to play number run? Yes! Excellent. Excellent. And let's have our number runner number one. Who is it? Abunge. Step forward. All right. Let's put 45 seconds on the clock and reveal that first sum. 11 multiplied by what is 121? Help! Help! Divide by five is what? Go. Very good. Tag the next person. Me. Me, me. Hurry up, hurry up. You only have what plus eight is sixteen. Go. Very good. Stop that clock. <laughs> Excellent. Let's look at what you did together. On to the first sum. We asked you eleven multiplied by what? Is 121. You give us 11. Is that correct? Yes! Are you sure? Yes! Yes! <laughs> 11 is the correct answer. On to the second sum. We asked you, 30 divided by 5 is what? You gave us 6. Is that correct? Yes! Yes! 6 yes. is the correct answer. Yes! <laughs> On to the third sum. We asked you, what? Plus 8 is 16. You give us 8. Is 8 correct? Yes! Well done. Let's give them all a big round of applause. Well done. They did manage to solve the three sums within the 45 seconds. They get to take home the maths books. Let's give them a round of applause. Well, congratulations to all of you, your double winners. You have won the books and you've helped me with my maths homework. That's right. Did you have fun playing number run? Yes! How are you feeling now that you've won all these books? Good? Good. <laughs> Excellent. There's still another half hour of fun right here on the No Zone. So don't go anywhere because we'll be right back after this break. Let's remind everyone who is watching us today what the Nozone buzzwords are. Dial. Send. Receive. Address. Message. Well done, everyone. Ranger Rukia will be teaching us about an animal that is small but can move the world. Hmm. Uh, what well, I want to find out what animal that is. Let's go see together on Wild Zone. Hello, Nose on Rangers. Today we are going to learn about some special insects that follow animal herds like this elephant herd. And here they come right now. This little insect is called a dung beetle. Can you see why? Dung beetles are found everywhere in the world, especially in farms, forests and plains. They, however, do not like places that are too dry or very wet. Dung beetles have three body parts just like other insects. The head, the thorax and the abdomen. The abdomen is covered by a colorless pair of wings that the beetle uses to fly around. Dung beetles are of many different colors, but their most common color is black. Dung beetles have a strong sense of smell and they use this to seek out dung. They separate the dung into pieces and roll these into balls. Some dung beetles dig holes and bury their dung balls in the ground. Then, they lay their eggs in these underground balls. This provides a safe home and nutrition for their young ones. Interesting! Other dung beetles wedge their dung balls in small plants or twigs and let their eggs develop there. There is a lot of competition and some dung beetles are very naughty. They steal dung balls from other beetles. This is why dung beetles roll away their dung quickly and bury it, so that they are not stolen. Dung beetles are very important insects. By digging and building tunnels in the ground while storing dung, beetles help loosen the soil and make it fertile for the crops. They also help plant seeds in the ground by burying dung that contains seeds that animals like elephants or cows had swallowed. 
By breaking down the dung, beetles also prevent flies from breeding in it. This helps protect you and I and other animals from diseases that are spread by flies and other pests. They work very hard, often rolling, dragging and lifting dung balls many times larger than their own bodies. Wow! Let's go see what happens underground. Inside these dung balls are the dung beetle eggs. The eggs hatch into larvae and these develop into adult dung beetles. These adults then crawl out of the ground to start their own search for dung. Here they come! Who would have thought that such a small insect could play such an important role in our environment? No zone rangers, let us allow these dung beetles to keep doing their work. It is our duty to ensure that the environment is clean for all people, animals and insects. See you again soon. Bye! Wow, I had no idea that dung beetles were so strong or that they did so much in the wild. <laughs> yes, there are always new things to learn about in the wild zone. I think we all know what that sound means. It's time for... Hot, Hot Numbers! Numbers! Hello everyone and welcome to Hot Numbers. Today we are going to learn about multiplication. We are going to multiply two digit numbers by a single digit number. You need to know your times tables to help you with your multiplication sums. Now I'm going to give you some quick fire questions to see if you all know your times tables. What is three times six? Yes, Han? 18. 10 times four? Yes, Atieno? 40. Very good, five times six? Yes, and Paul? 30. Very good. 7 times 7? Yes, John? 49. Mara, I don't see you making an effort to answer any of the questions. I don't have to answer all the time. Others need a chance too. And besides, I know my tables very well. Are you absolutely sure? Oh, yes. See, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times oh, 4 is 4, 1 times 4 is 3. Trust you, Mara, to pick the easiest. Okay. Now, today we are going to learn two different methods of multiplying two-digit numbers. We have the partition method and the column or the standard method. Let's start with the partition method. Our first sum will be 24 multiplied by 4. Now, we can write the sum in a table like this. We need to split or partition our two-digit number into sections of tens or ones. Now, in this case, 24 will be written as 20 and 4. We then multiply both numbers by 4. So what is 20 times 4? Yes, Anne? 80. 80. What is 4 times 4? Yes, Otieno? 16. 4 times 4 is 16. Now, the next step, we need to add the two section totals, which give us a combined total. So, 80 plus 16 is? Yes, Paul. 96. 80 plus 16 is 96. So... 24 times 4 is 96. Well done, everyone. Let's now look at the column or standard method. So we will first multiply the ones column, then the tens. So three ones times three is? Yes, Joan? Nine. Very good. And what is one ten? Times three? Oh, Teacher Pendo, I know that one. Yes, Marara. Oh, it's three. Aha, uh -huh, very good. So our answer is? 39. Oh, this sounds quite simple. Yes, it is. So long as you're not carrying a number, it is quite straightforward. Teacher Pendo, what do you mean by carrying a number? Let's get to that now. Let's multiply 37 by three. First, we multiply seven times three, which is? Yes, why there are 21. Very good. So we write the one in the ones column 
and we carry the two to the tens column. So what is three times three? Yes, Abunga? Nine. Very good. So we write our nine in the tens place. Now we add the two we had carried to the nine, which gives us? Yes, Joan? Eleven. Very good. We write one in the tens place and write the other one in the hundreds place. It is very important to put your numbers down in the correct place. We then bring down the one in the ones and we write it here. So our answer to 37 times three is 111. Normally, we do not label the columns, but today we've just done so to make it easy for you to understand. Let's try another sum. 18 times four. So what do we do first? Yes, Waidera? You multiply eight by four, which is 32. Mm -hmm. So we write two in the ones column, and then we carry three to the tens column. What do we do next? Yes, Anne? We multiply four by one, which is four, and put it in the tens column. Very good. And what do we do next? We add the three we had carried to the four, which is seven, mm -hmm. and bring down the two from the ones column to make it 72. So 18 times four is 72. Well done, everyone. Right now, though, let's link up with Uncle Supu, who has something special to show us in Art Zone. <laughs> Hi kids, I bet you didn't know it was me. Today I am an undercover agent. You can make one of these and it's very easy. All you need is a scissors and you need a big cardboard which you can fit your head in. So the process first, choose one of the corners which you think you can create the center of my face. Okay, I will plot my mask here and follow this height and then spread it out to make it bigger now. And this becomes the top part. The flap again, I need it. So I'll just draw a straight line. Turn it on this other side and do the same. The top area, you can cut in different styles depending on how you want to put it on. I'll use a curved line. And then now I plot my eyes and the mouth. One eye is on this side and the other one on this other side. So you have eyes and two separate sides and I'll just draw a simple eye with the eyebrow and the eyelashes and turn it over draw another eye and then the mouth do a small loop and sketch it down and continue on the other side now with the scissors and remember it's dangerous to use the scissors and we cut through the top part is very hard you need to use a lot of muscles. So this is our basic mask. I need to work now cutting out the mouth again. Eyes. And then also create a nose for the mask. And I'll need a small piece of cardboard. Then I fold the center. And I fold it into a triangle. The other side. and I'll use the glue and paste it. And then, paste it. You can decide to decorate it or put color, you can paint. And in this case, I'm going to take just pieces of paper and just stick them all over. And I'll just continue until I cover the whole space. The flaps I'm going to use to create the color. So you just bend them over and fold, make a small fold. So it's got a big color. And then you can paste it and continue covering it until yeah, you get something almost similar to this one. See you next time on ArtZone. Wow, I, I really enjoyed that. It's time for something a little different. It's time for us to put our brains into gear and spell it. 
animal, animal. chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. An, Otieno, and Mpau. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. You will compete for the top prize of the Nozone Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with one of these lovely dictionaries. Now, each word is worth one point. If you would like to hear the word again, simply say repeat. You have exactly 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. Are the rules clear? Yes. Anne, you're up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Anne, your 30 seconds start now. Dial. D-I-A-L. Handset. H-A-N-D-S-E-T. Puzzle. P-A-R-C-E-L. Signal. Repeat. Signal. S-E-G-E-L. <laughs> Counter. C-O-U-N-T-E-R. Earphones. E-A-E-A. -E Time is up. Well done. Otieno, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Otieno, your 30 seconds start now. Post. P-O-S-T. Stamp. S-T-A-M-P. Booth. B-O-T-H. Cable. C-A-B-E-L. Disconnect. D E S Transfer T R A N S F E R Processor P R P R Time is up. Well done. Mpau, you're next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Wow. Your 30 seconds start now. Call. C A double L. Letter. L E double T E R. Decode. D E C O N D. Address. A double D R E double S. Message. M E double S A G E. Computer. C O M P U T E R. Channel. C H N E L delivery D E L L V E R is up. Well done. After that tense edition of Spell It, we won't drag out the suspense any longer. In third place, we have Otieno. Let's give him a round of applause, everyone. Well done. Well done. Good. Now, in second place, we have Anne. Which means today's no zone spelling champion is Mpao. Let's give him a round of applause. Good. Step, step forward, forward. Mpao, step forward. Congratulations, Mpao. You are today's no zone spelling champion. Please show everyone at home your dictionary. Let's give him another Yay. round of applause. Well done. Well done. And for the two of you, you don't go home empty handed. You get to take one of these lovely dictionaries. And this is second position. Here you go. Well done. <laughs> Good. And for you, well done. Congratulations to all of you because you spelled very many words correctly. After that wonderful round of spellings, I think we all deserve a break. So why don't you sit back, relax, and enjoy with us another exciting edition of African Tales. Hello everyone, I hope you're seated comfortably because today I am going to read you an African tale about the letter of do. But don't forget to listen out for this week's buzzwords. In the distant lands of Burumbwa, men and animals shared a kingdom. They lived peacefully and happily. Both humans and animals had their own kings. 
King Lion was the king of the animals, while King Buzemba was the king of all humans. Every month, both men and animals would be invited to public meetings called barazas. In the meetings, things affecting the kingdoms would be discussed. One day, Hare, King Lion's secretary, and Mutu, King Buzemba's assistant, were writing invitation letters. The letters were an invitation to all humans and animals to the baraza. Hare was writing to all animals, while Mutu was writing to all humans. Make sure you put an address on each letter or they will get lost, said King Buzemba. I want everyone to receive their letters on time, added King Lion. When they were done writing the letters, they started putting them in envelopes. They then put stamps on each envelope. Why don't they have King Lion's picture on the envelopes? Asked Hare, showing one of the stamps to Mutu. It's because humans invented letter writing, so our king is on the stump, said Mutu. I will go and get Mr. Derv to carry these letters to the post office. We need to post them as soon as possible. Immediately Mutu left. He took all the letters and wrote them again and put them back in the envelopes. Mr. Derv then quickly took the letters to the post office. Hello, mailman, he said. Hello, Dove, replied the mailman. I have come to post these letters, said the Dove. You are just on time. The airplane that will carry the letters has just arrived. So the letters are carried by airplane. Is that why they are called air mail? Yes, that is correct, said the mailman. Mr. Dove flew off. The mailman then took all the letters to the plane. After the letters were inside the plane, the mailman went back to his counter, but found a letter. He slowly opened. The letter read as follows. Dear animals, let us not attend the baraza. The humans have refused to put our king on the stump. The humans have been exploiting animals, making us do everything for them while they do nothing for us. They do not like us. Yours faithfully, Mr. Hare. The mailman was shocked at the letter. He ran to a telephone booth and dialed the pilot's telephone number. Hello, this is the mailman. Please do not deliver the letters. The message is not good. It is my duty to make sure that I deliver all the letters. It doesn't matter what the message is, said the pilot. You are right. Bye, said the mailman. He ran out of the office towards King Buzemba's palace. He traveled for days and nights until he reached Buzemba's palace. What is it, mailman? King Buzemba said. The mailman gave him the letter. As he read the letter, King Buzemba got angrier and angrier. He rushed to his room and started writing a letter to King Lion. Dear King Lion, humans are sorry that we have not put your picture on the stump. The next stamp will have your picture. We also do not take care of you as we are supposed to. From today, we will start taking care of dogs and chicken to show you that we are still good friends. Yours faithfully, King Buzemba. When the king finished, he gave it to the mailman. Take this to the king lion. When the mailman arrived at King Lion's palace, the lion ate him. The news reached King Buzemba, who was very sad. King Buzemba called all the wise men in the kingdom. I want you to invent a way of sending letters without using animals like Mr. Duff, said King Buzemba. Our mailman was also eaten by King Lion. The method must work without a mailman too. The men sat, talked, and thought for days. One day, they came up with a solution. The letters would be typed in a computer, and instead of posting the letters in a post office, they would send them through the wire and to another computer. They decided to call the letters emails. King Buzemba fulfilled his promise by staying with dogs and chicken while putting King Lion on the stump. King Lion still refused to be friends with King Buzemba. From that day, animals and humans stopped talking. That is why dogs and chickens stay with humans. The end. What an interesting story. 
Well, that's all we had time for today. I am looking forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>an interesting story. I'm glad that on Nozon, lions and people can still be friends. Absolutely, Marara. Absolutely. You see, this is the best place for friends to have fun. But sadly, that's all we had time for today. Oh, well, we loved having you helping us with the show today. Did you enjoy yourselves? Yes! Excellent. Bye!